Some of the poorest countries in Africa are being exploited by rich multinationals through the illicit movement of cash. That's according to new research by a coalition of UK and African organisations, including Global Justice Now and Health Poverty Action. In a study entitled How the World Profits from Africa's Wealth, campaigners reveal how money leaves Africa every year much more than arrives. We cross now live to one of the authors of that report, Natalie Sharples of Health Poverty Action. Natalie, thanks for joining us. Now, we're often told that Africa receives huge amounts of foreign aid, but your report actually challenges this perception, saying more money is taken out of the continent than arrives. How is that possible? That's right, yes. So what the report shows is that despite what we're often told, the rest of the world takes far more from countries in Africa than it's giving back. So, for example, um, African countries receive about $30 billion in aid each year. And when you add in other resources like loans and foreign investment, there's about $160 billion going into Africa. Yet over $200 billion has been taken out of Africa each year. And that's through a range of practices, some of which are illegal, such as tax evasion, illegal logging and fishing, and some of which are technically legal but just arguably unfair. So, for example, foreign companies taking out very large profits on which they've paid little tax or as a result of the cost of climate change, which Africa doesn't cause, but is being forced to pay over $10 a year to adapt to. Now, the policies and practices of rich countries play a large part in this wealth extraction. So if we look, for example, at the UK, the UK sits at the helm of the largest network of tax havens in the world, thanks to its overseas territories, and those are key to enabling much of the theft of wealth from African countries. So the point we're really making in the report is that far more is being taken from African countries by the rest of the world than is being given back. And that the questions that we often see debated in Europe about whether or not we should be giving aid and how much is really a bit of a distraction from the main issue. A key question we should be asking is, are the policies and practices of our governments and corporations contributing to poverty in Africa? And if so, what can we do to address that? So which countries are worst affected? It's actually quite difficult to say which the worst affected are because different policies affect different countries in different ways. Um, But just to give an example, the DRC, where 95% of people live below the poverty line, and sadly we've just seen a recent Ebola outbreak, the DRC actually has $24 trillion in mineral deposits, so arguably it's actually a very rich country. The problem is its people aren't benefiting from its wealth. So in a recent two-year period, firms that are linked to the British Virgin Islands, a tax haven, paid around $1.5 billion below the market value for mineral licences. Now, that's almost double what the DRC spends each year on health and education combined. And that obviously has real-life impact. So more than half a million children are dying each year in the DRC. Nearly half of those deaths are not because of disease, but malnutrition, which is preventable. So that's a lot of children each year dying, not as a result of illness, but of poverty. And some of the policies and practices that we outline in our report are really some of the factors that contribute to that. Now, it appears that no one is being punished. Why why is that? Well, in terms of things like tax dodging, because of the levels of secrecy surrounding it, it's actually very hard to hold perpetrators to account. Um, And at the moment, companies don't even have to report publicly on the individual companies in which they're operating, which can make it very difficult to see how much tax they should be paying. Unfortunately, a key factor is those that benefit from the system, so lots of rich governments and global elites, are reluctant to take action to address the issues on which they're benefiting. And what governments in rich countries have been really good at is distracting attention from their own actions by focusing the debates on aid. So as a result, those of us who live in Europe could be forgiven for thinking that our country's primary relationship with Africa is one of aid, which gives us a false sense of our own generosity, when in fact, as this research shows, aid is only a very tiny part of the picture, but unfortunately it's allowed to become the focus of the debate and distracted from some of the real issues that are causing the poverty in the first place. And last but not least, how might rich countries be made more accountable? Well, there are a number of reforms that are needed at the international level. So we need a binding international agreement on transnational corporations to hold them to account for their actions, both at home and in their operations overseas. We need, obviously, to take urgent action on tax havens. And I think, fundamentally, we need to rethink the way we talk about poverty in Africa. So those of us who are outside of Africa need to question those who suggest that our relationship with African countries is primarily about aid and look instead to the policies and practices of our own governments and corporations that might be contributing to poverty. Natalie Sharples, thanks very much for joining us this morning from Health Poverty Action.